welcome to another weekend reading vlog from me, Johanna, me, my dog and books. This weekend you will get to see me go to TK Maxx for a wee bit of shopping, some thrift charity shopping, my library, baking cupcakes and of course let you know about my library haul and some book reviews. So grab yourself a cuppa and here's this weekend. I've got some stuff. I've got my new backpack, I think, and some stuff from Mum. I know Mum.
I'm back in the house and I'm about to try making vegan cupcakes. I say try. I used to be, so I've been vegan maybe eight, nine years. Before I was vegan, I was the self-proclaimed cupcake queen. I was very good at making cupcake with whipped frosting and all that. I perfected it. When I went vegan, I don't really eat much like vegan sort of junk food or cakes. So my thing is savoury snacks, uh, which I try not to indulge too much of. And a lot of that is just kind of for health, my immunity and stuff. Um, anyway, it's not going into that, but it's Christmas and the way, the way David loves cake and snacks and stuff like that. So he's always buying vegan cakes. And we have like a Christmas secret Santa sort of, I'm not doing the secret Santa bit, but there's like bring your own bacon and snacks and stuff on the 18th of December at work in the office. And I thought, you know what? Sometimes there's always cakes and stuff that come in, right? And most of them I can't eat. Um, and not always am I, and it's fine. I'm used to kind of not being catered for in the kind of office environment and that, that's kind of fine but you know I kind of wanted to prove that actually you can make vegan cake and it can taste bloody good so I thought I'll give it a go see if I can remember my rustiness from this and to be honest right because I don't I don't eat a lot of kind of high saturated fat stuff and things and obviously you can't make like cream frost and stuff without uh, butters so it's like stork it's basically margarine it's like a vegetable fat as opposed to anything if you can hear noises in the background i've got a home alone too on uh, i do love it you know bar the trump uh, cameo but anywho so i'm gonna give this a bash see how it works out as you'll have seen been to the been to the library um, charity shop, I picked up some stuff, so I've got some stuff to show you. So I'll do that once I've got these in the oven and out and cooling. You know, I popped to the charity shop and I picked up two completely unnecessary purchases. Look, it is a fibre optic and colourful lip musical Christmas village, and there was two of them. So wait till I show you. I haven't shown the wage. They're only three ninety nine each. Honestly, these things are quite never buy stuff. So I think it needs batteries. Yeah, never buy stuff for Christmas, like, it's double A, like brand new, when you can get all this great stuff in the charity shop. So I've went and got batteries, let's see, oh, the oven is beeping, you know what that means, cupcakes are ready, let's see if this works. And then you can just have it just with the lights or the lights and the music. <laughs> How awesome is that? I'll keep the boxy because they'll be good for putting it away. And set the styrofoam from it. It's like pretty old. Here's the other one. Seasons Greetings Christmas Card Shop and this is a Christmas decor. <laughs> oh, I'm so chuffed with these. This is the other one. wonder what it would be like if you have them both going. Cupcakes 
not going through the taste test. I think I need a bigger muffin tray. making cupcakes are. Frosting's on top with some gingerbread sprinkles or Christmas tree sprinkles. So this is a test run for the ones that I'm doing in the office. I have actually got like Christmassy cupcake holders. So now for the taste test with David. Well, let's start. David is always my cake and food taster. Giving him this, and we shall eagerly await his thoughts because it's been about eight years since I've done Does it look okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, the pups are getting in. Mm. Very good. good. <gasps> pups, we think we've got good cupcakes. It's very early Sunday morning. I've got the ambience on. Hold on, I'll show you. That's a crackling fire sound. I've just started this, which um, I got in my abominable book subscription, which is my monthly horror book. So I'm reading this with two of my friends and it's I've never heard of it before, but it's basically a book about a cult set in the Scottish Highlands. So I'm reading to chapter seven today. So I'll tell you a wee bit more about that later. I've also got, let's see, my sausage dog, some coffee in there as well. So as you can see, it's still very dark outside. I don't know what time it is, seven o'clock or something. I've been up since half five. The usual, last night I never got a chance to update you. What did we do? I made the cupcakes. They've went down a treat. Now I have like 12 cupcakes. <laughs> First world problems. Um, oh, I'll put the light here so you can see me a bit better. Um, and last night we watched National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation and Royal Families BBC show, it's Christmas special, and The Last Train, which is a weird kind of Christmas, but I'm not really sure, um, film with Martin Sheen. Um, it's the second time we've watched it, or maybe it's the third. Anyway, I think that's enough times, it won't be on our next year's Christmas list. It's good, it's interesting. Um, and then, what else? Did I do it? Well, I didn't do any cross stitching, and the reason is so, that, like, I've hurt my. I was taking something off of outside that kept banging against the wall, like a wee garden sign. And when I pulled it off, I scraped my hand on the wall, so my hands were quite sore and really dry this time of year. So I was like putting loads of like Vaseline on my hands last night while I was watching TV, so I couldn't really do anything. <laughs> it has seemed to have worked. I might need to do more of that today. I've started chilled hidings last night on um it was free on my Kindle. So I think it's a collection of well it says it's a collection of creepy Christmas stories. So I'll check in on that later and I've not I've not got it down with me so I'll show you later. I'm still reading a Christmas Christmas Wish Tastrophe, which is a middle grade Christmas book. And I'm so enjoying it. We follow Lydia Marmalade, amazing name, whose 
mum has died and so she is now in the ward like being taken care of by this other lady partridge i think her name is so it's set it's quite good the way the book does it because it tells the reader this is set in the olden times of like so there's no smartphones yada yada so it's very much kind of Jane Austen type times or maybe not maybe it's early 20s anyway she goes to Lady Parsh's house who wants her to be a lady she's been told she's not allowed to take her sausage dog Colin but she has she's hidden him in and there's also like a sprite a little tiny fairy winter sprite who's there who appears and is stuck because she's there to grant Lydia her wish because of the time of year she made a special wish and then the winter sprite Belle her name is appears and then they realise that they can't make this wish come true because Lydia was asking for her mum to be there and obviously her mum's dead and that's not what they can do with the wish so now Belle's stuck and it's a wish catastrophe and Colin the sausage dog amazing name is in this story too Lydia's feeling sad and lonely and Lady Partridge seems mean but there's a cook called Harriet uh, who seems lovely anyway I'm just having a great time with it I'm having a great time so that's my current reads gosh it is dark isn't it not when I'm like next to the tree I like sitting here reading actually with ambience on um, I'm reading a bit of horror about cults, so I'm going to finish up to chapter seven, read a bit of the chill, chill tidings, and then later today, so I need to wrap my kind of secret Santa because I'm meeting some of my in real life book group buddies for a lovely festive lunch in a wonderful place called Single End. And um, there's two of them in Glasgow City Centre, one in the Merchant City and one kind of further in the West End. Single End is the name of, well, it's not single, but anyway, this is what it means. <laughs> it's a type of building, um, a, a terminology used in Glasgow and Scotland. FYI, they do amazing brunch uh, and there's quite good vegan options normally. So that would be nice, but I'm taking my secret Santa sack that I got in a charity shop a couple of weeks ago and we'll put in a Christmas book and then select one out or a Christmas gift. Mine is the book The Wintering, so I'm hoping someone quite likes that uh, with a couple of wee. So I need to wrap that, walk the dogs, and I might go in a wee bit early because I've got a book that I need to exchange in Waterstones. Uh, so I might go in a wee bit early. And so if the weather seems like it's going to be nice, I'll maybe try and get some of the Christmassy festive lights in the Glasgow City Centre on there. Anywho, happy Sunday or whenever, what, happy morning or day or an evening whenever you're watching this and I'll take you with me as always. Also friends, I needed to show you, so I got this at the charity shop yesterday. I think I might have held it up on the camera, but I washed it last night because I was desperate to wear it today. What you see, so it's a cosy hood and then it's like a nudie type thing, but not as thick, which is helpful because I do have a nudie, which is so cosy, but when it's not quite freezing, because it's got Mickey Mouse skiing. This is so cosy. Also smells of fabric softener. Now, <laughs> honestly, it was like three or four pounds and it's got pockets. I think, Patty, Patty, do you approve? Come and see the tape more everybody. Come and say good morning. <laughs> You're so sleepy. She's just got up and just been out for a wee pee pee's. Pee pee's. Lucy's still upstairs sleeping on the bed. Oh, big cats, big hugs. Mm. Right, that's my tea bag. My tea bag, my tea, ready. My wee cup of tea, a bit of cereal, and then I'll walk the dogs. So the dogs have been walked, I've had cereal. Look at my today's today's Christmas jumper. I got that from a refugee charity in mine. So it's my new one for the season, which also just donates to charity. So if you're going to get one, get them some hand from your uh, charity shop or donate or get one from a charity that you care about. So now, because I'm going to be leaving in about 40 minutes, 
I need to wrap my secret Santa because of course I'm not prepared and I haven't 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 planned anything. This is the secret Santa for book group. So I got this book, Wintering, The Power of Rest and Retreat in Difficult Times. I've read this on audio and I highly recommend it. It says, wintering is a poignant and comforting meditation on the, fall, the fallow periods of life. Times when we must retreat to care for and repair ourselves. Catherine May thoughtfully shows us how to come through these times. Why am I out of breath? Through these times with wisdom of knowing that, like seasons, our winters and summers are ebb and flow of life. So I've got that because I think that would be nice. A bookmark from, these are from Waterstones. A bookmark says she believed she could, so she did. And a little notepad. So I'm going to wrap them up. I don't know who will get this because I can't, I'm not really sure how we're going to do this. So we haven't bought for people as opposed to six of us. Right, so this is what I do. See all the stuff that comes in your, if you order from Amazon or anything online. Which, you know, I hate ordering from Amazon, but I do it because sometimes I have to. And where I can afford, I'll buy alternatives. But I shall make the best of this. So. I will use the Amazon brown paper and wrap this. Then I'll use like string or something. I got this from TK Maxx. It was quite cheap. What was it? Fiverr or something. So let me show you what I'm doing. Not like I am not a professional wrapper and my wrapping's a bit dodgy. But hey, let's see how this looks. crafty cut a little bit of eucalyptus from a eucalyptus tree in the garden and I'm gonna I'm gonna somehow attach it here to make it look pretty and there we go <laughs> it's very homemade <laughs> I'm not crafty like other than following a pattern but I always like to use bound paper and then hopefully this just comes off and then they can recycle all those bits early Monday morning. I'll we'll say early. I've been awake for about an hour and a half. It's nearly seven o'clock. My big Christmas, one of my big Christmas mugs got this from a charity shop a few years ago. It holds a big mug of coffee and then look, Patty came down with me. She needed out so I thought we'll just sit down here because I've got ambience on in the tree 
I never got much of a chance to speak to you yesterday because oh, Glasgow City Centre was really busy so the thought of actually trying to record stuff see the Christmas carnage of people at the shops and all of that anyway, lovely lunch I actually had a vegan breakfast they serve breakfast all day uh, in single end so I had that, it was very tasty and then we went to Tinderbox and had some coffee and a bit of cake biscuits and we did our wee secret sad exchange so wait till she this year because some of us were meeting in person we've organised the ones who there was a couple of people either were sick family commitments or one of our book group members stays in London so we organised that and I put it all in a Santa sack and then we picked out and then the mum of one of the uh, of two of the group, book group members took one and then she's going to swap around anyway I've got a secret sign oh, from a book group and we just had a budget and the thing was a book obviously so I'm not going to open it till Christmas Eve I think Christmas Eve so this morning the leech is working and uh, I think he's going into the office today so he might take the car to the station which means I'll be mostly at home walking the doggos just cleaning herself uh, and making content for you guys I think is my main plan I'm currently, and my Kindle is about to die because it keeps saying very low battery, I'm currently reading Chill Tidings, which is a collection of, I think, because at the moment I'm maybe on the third or fourth short stories, a collection of creepy sort of festive ghost stories. So ghost stories that are set around, you know, Christmas time. And from what I'm seeing on each of the stories, I think they're all stories that have been originally published in like, 18 such and such so they're all quite old stories and then they're being collated in this book so I'm quite liking it it's available on Kindle Unlimited so I picked it up because I quite like the sound of it and so far so good I do like kind of historical gothic ghost stories and most of them are just kind of roughly around kind of holiday season so I'm reading that and then I've got some other books that well I'm going to read it until my battery runs out and then I need to charge it and then I'll talk to you later about some of the books that I'm currently reading. Maybe got some reviews for you and I'm sure there was something else I need to chat to you about. I'll remember later, probably once I've had my breakfast and enough decaf coffee that gives me the placebo of being awake. <laughs> Busy wee day. Being productive, got a list of things to do. Do you ever do that? Like just work through a list. So far I'm doing okay. Ordered um, Lucy and Patty some treats from VeggiePets.com, which is where I get their food and stuff. Plus some extra treats for Dog Walker's dog and my wee sister's dog Cora for Christmas. So those are the ones that I get, bits and bobs. I've sorted out my secret Santa, so I need to wrap that. But I need to go back to the charity shop because I ordered something in a wee waistcoat like a knitted one and I got it in two sizes because I wasn't sure which size would fit me so I need to return another one so I can get the pennies back in my bank account <laughs> anyway I'm off to drop that off and come back maybe make soup or a sandwich for lunch I can't decide and then I've got stuff to chat to you about I got books from the library I got books from a lovely friend and what else? I need to show you my slow cross stitch progress. So I just dropped off donation to the charity shop. And of course, I can't not go in and have a nosy. I don't need anything. I'm just going in for a look. Come with me.
we're coming to an end of another weekend reading vlog so before i start wrapping up here's patty in our little christmas jumper on the back it says santa i i ate no it says i ate santa's cookies didn't it she's very relaxed and then lucy is raging about her jumper aren't you come on let's see you let's show the people let's show our friends get a little gnome and yeah christmas ambiance is on and they guys are just chilling like villains and i have stuff to catch up with you on also look my hair is now long enough to get it in a decent ponytail i'm very excited about this the set <laughs> oh my hair kind of needs washed so i should have um should have done that for you but i didn't look look at the pile of books still there look how big my hand looks anywho's let's ask you a christmas trivia which you give me the comment and give me it i got this from the charity shop like two years ago and do it every year so you can give me the answer in the comments below and in no particular order in the 12 days of christmas how many calling birds are given there's a clue somewhere between one and twelve and the other question is, which Christmas song contains the lyrics, Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful? Let us know in the comments below. That rhymed, didn't it? That rhymed. Anywho's, still using this mug. It's great for fizzy, fizzy water. So, a couple of things to update you on. The Quiet Tenant, I finished that the other week. This is a great book for anyone that loves a book about serial killers. It's fiction, it's not true crime, but it's quite a unique way of telling the story of a serial killer. In this book, who's called Aiden, but he's highly regarded in the community, so of course nobody thinks he's a serial killer. But you get the POV, so he has, what you learn is he's murdered eight women and he has another one in his shed. And you get the POVs from uh, the, women in the, the women in the shed and then Emily, who is a woman in the community who doesn't know him as a serial killer but kind of has a thing for him. And then there's Cecilia, yeah, who's a family friend. So the women in the shed at some point because Aiden, the serial killer's wife, dies, then becomes the women in the house because he invites her into the house while still coercively controlling her, into the house with his 13-year-old daughter. So as you can imagine, this is a very changing scenario in this story with multiple POVs. It's tense, it's creepy. It's a wee bit, I would say medium to slow paced, but I enjoyed that in respect to the story. But the story is icky and creepy and disturbing. So if that sounds up your street, check it out. I think the cover in the US and Canada is quite different from this. So if this doesn't ring a bell when you're seeing it, it's because the cover's different. Then, as you know, I went to the library and I got out a couple of books show you right two are crafty ones because from santa i have asked for crochet needles because my friend is going to teach me how to crochet like baby crochet like a granny square or something so i got these two books from the charity uh, shop from the library because i thought what better way to try and learn a new skill once i've been shown the basics by my friend than you know some how-to books and the libraries are great for that. Your libraries are great for like, like any sort of books. Most of them you can request, but also like cookery books as well. So I got How to Crochet, 50 Easy Projects. And this one says free, free form Crochet with Confidence. Then I picked up these two books based on nothing other than the covers. This one is Irresponsible Adult by Lucy Dillon. I thought this sounds like a good one for the new year. Does anyone truly feel like a grown-up? No, I don't anyway. It says, sisters Chloe and Robin may be close in age, but their attitudes to life couldn't be further apart. So Robin is the 
this, oh no, so Chloe is a fully fledged adult. She's married, got her own business. She's even got her own scent. Um, whereas Robin is still waiting for the instruction manual to adult life and success is keeping her houseplant alive. Skating by at her job as an estate agent, she's adept at avoiding housework, ignoring admin and evading her mother's anxious questions about her love life. But when Robin's fired in the most publicly humiliating ways imaginable, her chaos catches up with her. This sounds so much fun. Also, like, couldn't resist the cover. Then this one. Oh, I've got to take Lucy to the vet tomorrow. Nothing to worry about. Just a wee checkup for her regular checkup before she gets more of her medication and stuff. This one I picked up purely because of the cover and title. After She's Gone by Camilla Greb. She holds the key to a murder she just doesn't remember. This was giving me winter thriller vibes. Also, this is another video idea that I've just had. Would you like a video about winter thriller vibes? Or not vibes, winter thriller books. Let me know because I kind of do love a winter thriller. So let me know and I can make that as one of my midweek videos. But this one says, as a cold case, oh, I can't read, a cold as, a, a case as cold as the season. An investigator who is missing, a killer ready to strike again, a profiler who can't remember, and a boy who holds their secret in their hands. If anyone's read this, let me know. If anyone's also read this one, let me know. Because I've never heard of any of them, but both of them spoke to me in the library. Did I any, need any more books out from the library? No, I didn't. And then these were two that I can't remember if I showed you in a previous video, but I was at a EDI leadership workshop in work last month. That's Equalities, Diversity, Inclusion. And these both books became came highly recommended and they sounded amazing. So this one is Muslims Don't Matter by uh, Saeeda Varsi, who was UK, uh, Britain's first Muslim cabinet minister. Um, she's also a lawyer, businesswoman and racial justice campaigner. If you're a British uh, citizen and interested in politics, you might know of her. And um, this just came out this year, I think in autumn, and it says, I'm done with condemning before I've given myself the license to speak. I'm done with feeling obliged to distance myself from the bad views of the bad Muslims. I'm done with being the acceptable, palatable Muslim. A very important book from a virtually important, uh, virtually, a vitally important voice. And then another book, which is called The Bad Feminist. Oh no, The Bad Feminist. That's a different book, which I also highly recommend. This is the Feminist Killjoy Handbook. And it's one of those books that when I was reading the synopsis and it came recommended, it talks about like, do your colleagues give you an eye roll when you mention the word sexism or racism in a meeting or in work? Are you the kind of person that doesn't laugh at jokes when they're not funny? Um, are you the divisive person who points out division? Yada, yada. Are you the feminist killjoy? Then yes, and you probably want to read this book. It talks about what is, femi what is a feminist killjoy, how to survive being one, how to be a feminist killjoy as a cultural critic, a philosopher, a poet and an activist. So this is a kind of book I'm looking forward to getting really stuck into probably between Christmas and New Year. Reigniting, and I don't need to reignite, but reinforcing my feminism. And also I think it's a kind of book that if I really do enjoy it, I might have to own my own copy as like one of those go-to handbooks to remind yourself to keep being that feminist killjoy. Then I got two lovely books gifted to me by my beautiful friend Megan and she gave me this little wee hand card and wee sticker. It's a lovely wee card which I'll use as a bookmark and she had mentioned like she was unhauling some books and I'd spotted them on our stories and one of them that I really wanted was Carrie Soto is back. So I've read this, I read this in audio by the way and I would say it's one of the best audio productions I've read because it's got like a full cast and it's quite an immersive audio book experience. This follows Carrie who is making a comeback in the in the ta tennis championship world. You do not need to like tennis or watch tennis in the slices to absolutely enjoy this book. This is one of my favourites of Taylor Jenkins Reid and I highly recommend it but I've never owned it and so I was desperate for a copy and she gifted me her pre-loved one. And then on an aside she gave me a little surprise pre-gift and it's A Spark of Light by Jodie Pico. Oh, so look at this cover. 
I have no idea what this one's about. Also, can we just remind ourselves how many books Jodie Pico's written? This one, it says, the Centre for Women's Reproductive Health offers a last chance at hope, but nobody ends up there by choice. Its very existence is controversial and to the demonstrators who barricade the building every day, the service is, it offers is no different from legalised murder. Now life and death decisions are being made horrifying really real. A lone protester with a gun has taken the staff, patients and visitors hostage. Starting at the tense moment of the negotiations for the release, a spark of light unravels backwards, revealing the hour by hour, the hour by urgent hour, what brought each of these people, the gunmen, the negotiator, the doctors, the nurses, the women who have come to them for treatment to this point. Uncertainties un as yeah. Uncertainties unwind as truths and secrets are peeled away, revealing the complexities of balancing the right to life with the right to choose. And it's blurred by Stephen King at the bottom and it says, writes with unassuming brilliance. So those were... <laughs> uh, two wonderful new books I received. Thanks to my beautiful friend Megan. Then I wanted to show you my latest cross stitch from Cattle Power Cross Stitch that's just came in, which will be my post Christmas cross stitch. And look at it there, it says home is where, does it say? Home is where the heart lives. You see that? So this looks like a fun one. And it came with a, like a little tiny stand. So once I get to finish that, so I'll open that one up and show you in the new year. And then, I wanted to show you the gift. So if your name is Chelsea and you're watching this video and you know who you are because we've been on a bookish weekend retreat together, look away because I have your secret Santa. But I wanted to show you guys what I got as a secret Santa. So I was looking at her Amazon wish list and I wanted to get her a book and then a couple of wee things that I could send separately. So this one I got from Waterstones when it's got the gift receipt in case somebody else gives it and I can give it a bag. It is, well, my cover, I've got a very old edition of this and I've still not finished it right, but it's Helter Skelter. The true story of the mansion, mansion. <laughs> the true story of the Manson murders. Um, now, this is obviously a, a reprint clearly, but I'm trying to remember when this was originally written. 1974 terrifying cover so I got her that a little bookish notelet pad we all need a notepad and I couldn't resist this I got this little kind of waterproof tote bag so I'll be wrapping that up and sending that on its merry way to my secret Santa uh, just in time for Christmas day so I'm sending that one so I'm very excited to send her that and then last but not least, as you might have seen, I was at the charity shop a wee minute ago and I picked up two hardbacks. Two pound each, can I knock it? Now, one of these I want to give, one of these I want to keep and one of these I want to give to my friend for part of her Christmas because we do secondhand Christmas gifts. So I can't decide which one. In all honesty, I'll be happy with either of these. So I want to read the synopsis and then um, get you guys to tell me. Guys, I mean, in a gender neutral way, as you know, I'm just taking the sticky off. Um, because I can't decide which one to gift and which one to keep and to read in the new year. So this one says, this one is, now you see us by Bali Kaur Jaswal. Rule number one for being a maid, remain invisible. Karazon, Angel and Donita have all come to Singapore to work for a living. The thing that unites them, their labour must remain unseen. But when a friend is accused of murdering her employer, everything changes. Each woman has secrets to keep, yet they must gather every ounce of bravery, fearlessness and complete audacity to clear the name of one of their own. After all, no one knows the secret of Singapore's elite, quite like the women who work in their homes. The cover is also delightful, but this sounded good. Or an author who I do like, and I've not read this one, it's Dead to Her by Sarah Pinborough. Being the second wife can be murder, it says. 
don't worry, the synopsis is very short. Something old. When Marcy met Jason Maddock, she couldn't believe her luck. Becoming Jason's second wife catapulted her into the elite world of high society. But underneath the polite old money manners, she knows she'll always be an outsider and her hard-won life hangs by a thread. Something new. Then Jason's widowed boss brings back a new wife from the trip to London. Young, beautiful, reckless. Nobody can take their eyes off Keisha, including Jason. Something you can never undo. You can never, ever undo, it says, sorry. Marcy, Marcy refuses to be replaced so easily. People would kill for her life of luxury. What will Marcy do to keep it? So tell me, which one do I keep and which one do I gift? Because I can't decide. Anyway, blooming bargain, four quid, and all for a good cause. And so that, my dear, wonderful friends, is the end of another weekend bean vlog. So this will be going out the penultimate weekend before Christmas. So I'm mindful that I don't want to do like a weekend reading vlog that is overly Christmas that you end up watching after Christmas, especially if A, you're done with Christmas or B, you don't even celebrate Christmas. So, but then when I'm recording it, it's going to be like the weekend before Christmas. So let me know whether you want me to dial down the festivities. I'll more than happily do because I'll always be doing cosy hobbies or tooting around the house or always going to a charity shop or a library. So that is absolutely fan do be do. So just let me know what you'd like to see because I always like to create content that you'd be interested in. Anyways, that has been my weekend. I hope you've enjoyed spending it with me again and watching. I do love when you comment and like, and if you don't already, please do subscribe. It would be my Christmas wish. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, and if you don't know what to comment, but would like to comment on something, answer the trivia question if you can. I'll give you the answers below. And if not, give me just a smiley face emoji or a colon, close bracket, <laughs> whatever is easiest. And so until next time, I shall see you in another bookish video with me, my books, and my dogs another time. <laughs> Bye!